most of the time in these houses, I want you to get um, a landlord policy. And I want you okay. to tell your sellers that they need a landlord policy also. If, okay. And I want you to buy empty houses, vacant houses, like houses that don't have anybody in them right now. So if okay. you have somebody, you have a seller, and they mm -hmm. have an empty house, they mm -hmm. are supposed to tell their insurance agent that that house is empty. Correct. Mm -hmm. Empty house policies are higher than landlord policies. So that's one of the wins that you can tell them is that, now I don't know, they may be lying to their insurance agent, you sure. know, and not mm -hmm. telling them that it's empty. But insurance mm -hmm. agents, insurance brokers, insurance adjusters are sneaky little boogers and they will drive by to yeah. see if it looks like somebody is there or not. Living in that house, okay. Now do you still get the same type of coverage with a landlord policy? You can. And if you buy a house uh, on a lease option and the um, when you get your lead sheet, one of the questions is, mm -hmm. um, is there payment PITI? So is the payment principal interest tax and insurance? Yeah. That okay. way they're already paying their insurance, which is good. But mm -hmm. I love insurance and insurance agents love me because I want my own policy. Okay. And I think it's liability only. And okay. so say I'm renting this house, I got a lease option for $500 and their payment is four seventy five, dollars And that includes principal interest tax and insurance. Okay. So they already have theirs paid on the yearly mm -hmm. basis mm -hmm. and I'm paying their 500. So they're getting $2,500, $25 a month off of me. No big okay. deal. Totally cool. Yeah. You know, I'd like to get what they pay, but sometimes it's just easier to give them an extra 25 bucks and not worry about it. So I'm okay. going to turn around and I'm going to rent that house for uh, 650 or 700 or 850, depending on what kind of neighborhood it's in. Mm -hmm. And then say a hundred dollars of that goes towards my insurance. Okay. So that way, you know, if I'm paying 500 and I'm getting, let's say 750, Mm -hmm. The first hundred goes towards my insurance bill. So that means okay. I'm only getting 150 free and clear, but right. somebody else is paying my insurance on this house. That's true. Yeah. And you still have money free and clear. And you still have money free and clear and okay. you gave nothing or little or nothing to get into this deal with this seller mm -hmm. and your tenant buyer gave you five, 10, 15, $40,000. Mm-hmm. You know, you can also use that to pay your insurance for the year. Say your insurance is a thousand dollars, they gave you ten thousand. You use a thousand of it towards your uh, insurance, then you still have nine thousand to work with. Okay. Okay. And then you get that other hundred every month, so that means your monthly cash flow goes up too. Flow. So okay. either way, we're going to let our tenant buyers pay our insurance. And yeah. on my contracts, it says that the tenant buyer can get renter's insurance mm -hmm. and it's on them to get renter's insurance. And I'll tell you that, I don't know if y'all saw this or not, but um, the weekend after Thanksgiving, Gatlinburg, Tennessee caught on fire. Oh, wow. And I had a house and it caught on fire. Now, mm -hmm. that was one of the last houses that I did an assignment on. Um, so I was already out of it. I didn't have, I wasn't in the middle on it, but my homeowner had the payment. She had taxes insurance included on the payment and my buyer had renter's insurance to cover oh, okay. his contents. Okay. But on that house, when mm -hmm. I sold it to him, it didn't have any sheetrock. It didn't have any floors. It didn't have any kitchen cabinets. It didn't have any lighting fixtures. I wow. think it had two toilets. It had one shower, but he had put the other toilets in. He put the other mm -hmm. showers in. He put the drywall in. He put the life fixture, and he didn't have insurance on all of that. So he lost all the money that he had invested in that. Wow. That sucks. It, it sucks. Completely that sucks. sucks. That's okay. uh, he was also running his business out of there, but he had business insurance to cover that too. So I love insurance. Okay. I, yeah, I was just wondering, ever since I saw that post, I had been wondering, I was like, I can't wait to Tuesday because I'm going to ask her, what insurance did she have? Like, I'm like, how do you cover, you know, since you were letting them do the work, I'm like, how do you cover that? Okay. You, and tell your insurance agent. Okay. And, you know, a lot of times, like, that Gatlinburg house, when I, when mm -hmm. I got it, it was nothing, okay? My seller, the reason I got it is because my seller was in Florida, 
Okay. I was in Knoxville, which is close enough to mm-hmm. Gatlinburg that I could drive up there and, you know, make the deal happen. And my seller told me that she had hired two different contractors, local good contractors, and she mm-hmm. put $50,000 into this house and it still needed another $50,000. And she was in Florida. She didn't want the house anymore. She didn't want to deal with these contractors anymore. She didn't want to have to think about this house again. So she was mm-hmm. going to sell it to me for what she owed which was about 140, I think it was 141. And I put it out on the market for like 165. And it was a um, $300,000 house. Wow. In Gatlinburg. And I mean, it was a feeding frenzy, but you had to get it as is. You had to finish. Yeah, you had to work finish on it. it. Mm-hmm. And that knocked wow. a lot of the local buyers out of it. Mm-hmm. But I had investors from Maryland and Nashville and um, maybe Maryland was the end or Michigan. I had investors driving in from everywhere to wow. look at this house and making the offers on it. And I didn't know if it, I, I didn't know it was going to work or not, but it ended up the local guy got it. Oh, wow. Okay. And that was the last one that I did not stay in the middle on because my guy, my, my tenant buyer gave me $18,000, I think. And I ended up giving 10 of it to the seller because I was getting out of the middle of it. And okay. I knew she was going to be taking on this thing and okay. I kept seven. All okay. right. And my seller's payment was $1,100, I think. And my tenant buyer is paying 1500. Oh. And the reason I stopped getting out of the middle on this is because my tenant buyer, his name is Steve. He has two different businesses that he's running in Gatlinburg. And I was talking to him one day, we were signing the contracts and he was like, and I was telling him, you know, I was going to make seven. I was going to send 10 of it. He gave me 18. I had a, um, a guy that does uh, home vesters, the we buy ugly houses people, they're a franchise. Yeah. He mm-hmm. actually got the lead and mm-hmm. it wasn't in his area. It wasn't really in mine either, but he gave mm-hmm. it to me. And so I gave him a thousand dollars. That's how I ended up with 7,000 instead of eight. And I gave the seller 10,000. So anyway, Steve is my tenant buyer. And Steve told me when I told him that I was going to get 8,000 and she was getting 10,000. So he would get 10,000 off his purchase price, but he mm-hmm. would still owe more. He was like, you're giving this woman $10,000. And I was like, yeah. And he was like, why? Why don't you just keep it? And I was like, because what do you mean? And he was like, and I mean, I'm paying $1,500. How much is her payment for real? I'm sure it's not 1500 bucks. I'm sure I'm paying more. If you stayed in the middle of this, you'd make money off of me every month. My tenant buyer is telling me this. (laughs) And this is like my 13th deal that year. Mm-hmm. And I remember saying, I'm losing money. <laughs> and he was like, you really are. Mm-hmm. And that was the last one. I did 14 deals in 2014. I did another deal and I stayed in on it. It was, it's my farm deal. I'll show you that. Okay. But anyway, okay. people get it. When that okay. tenant buyer told me you should stay in the middle, you were losing money. Mm-hmm. Totally changed me. Cool. Because I was under the mindset that I needed to help the seller. I needed to help the buyer. And if I got 7000 that was good enough. Mm-hmm. Except I gave $10,000 away. And I gave $400 a month away. Wow. Yeah, you did. Yeah. So that's why <laughs> I'm teaching y'all, okay, to stay in the middle, get these lease option deals, get 10, 15, 20, 40,000 up front. Get mm-hmm. 100, 400, 800 a month. And mm-hmm. then he's still going to owe, he would have owed $20,000 difference between what he paid and what she owed on it. What she owed on it, yeah. Now that house caught on fire, and I'm actually mm-hmm. working with them right now so he can buy the lot from her because she collected all the insurance money. She doesn't really yeah. want the lot. He wants the lot. He's going to rebuild mm-hmm. a house. Like he was filing to get a mortgage when the fire hit. Like he was like oh. two weeks away of getting a clear to close when the fire hit Gallenberg or he would have bought the house. Wow. Anyway, so, 
Long story short, that's the insurance. That's why we all have insurance. We get insurance, pay for insurance. It is totally, totally, totally worth it. I love insurance. Y'all should love insurance. And in case of a natural disaster or a stupid tenant, you need insurance. <laughs> uh, one of the crack houses that I bought in Georgia that I have under contract right now, it was rented. It was rented and the tenant was having a barbecue and somehow or another, not really sure if something on the grill or if the grill just, you know, flamed up. Sometimes they do that. I, I watch my husband from out the window do the grill and sometimes it just flames up. Well, I don't know if there was a rag or if there was something close, but anyway, that caught on fire and I don't know what else caught on fire, but the siding caught on fire, which caught the house on fire and wow. then the deck was on fire. So like the back side of this house is pretty much gone, but it was from a tenant mistake, not an electrical mistake or mm -hmm. something else yeah. more natural. It was that the tenant was grilling and wasn't a responsible griller. Wow. But insurance covered all of that. And now I have the house for pretty darn cheap. Cool. Anybody else have a question before I get started? Morning, everybody. Everybody good? Yep. All good? All right. Um, if anybody has any questions, like if you're going through any of the trainings and anything kind of stands out to you and says, this is weird or how does she handle that? You don't have to wait until Tuesday to send me a message or to post it in the group and say, hey, I just kind of need to knock this back and forth or hey, this is really bothering me. What about this? Or hey, I'm thinking about doing this. Have you had any? I mean, like all of that, you don't have to wait until Tuesday to ask me or ask the rest of the group. Put it in the Rockstar group. If you're not comfortable putting it out there for everybody to say, ooh, this is a great blah, 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 then send me a message and I may post it <laughs> so you can do it anonymously. <laughs> That's where I get a lot of my good content from y'all, okay? 